it's just so interesting to be thinking about, about stewardship, about institutions in this time when the whole country is looking at these questions of the way the economics work. From both sides, we hear ideas about the way things should be organized, the ways things that sh should be distributed, the way things that should be spent or not spent. In my interplay work, uh, when we're teaching people about a little thing we call internal authority, we have a very simple kind of process that we use. We, we pick a subject, and then we ask people to think about all the messages they received as they were growing up about that particular subject. And then we ask them to think about the things they've learned from their own experience and to kind of compare how those two things fit. Because, you know, we're brought up with a lot of ideas, some of which we believe because they were the right things to believe, some of which we believe because that was the only thing that we heard. And then there are other things that we've learned from our own experience. A couple of weeks ago, we were using this exercise in, in a group of people, and my co-teacher, Koke Nakamoto, decided to use as the subject class and money, partly because what was happening about 10 blocks from where our building is, which is the Occupy Oakland site. So we thought it would be interesting just to look at some of those questions, and so we started the first part of the process, started naming those things that we would, had learned as we were growing up about class and money. And some of them were sort of the typical things that you might think of, that, you know, if you work really hard, you will prosper. prosper. Those people who have, can, can we do anything about this? Okay. Try this. That's much better. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we, we li listed all those things that you might think of, and I realized about halfway through, and I was just participating, that, um, that most of them were relatively negative, and they were kind of stereotypical, and, and I realized that I wasn't naming all of the messages that I had gotten growing up from my religious tradition. These are part of a kind of external authority. These are messages that I learned over and over again through my participation in communities like this. Things like, well, you know, we are responsible for our brothers and sisters. You know, we should take everything that we have and combine it together and share it equally so that everyone has what they need. If one person suffers, everyone suffers. Even if you only have like three fish, five loaves of bread, it will be enough to eat, but only if you spread it around. And it was just so interesting in that part of the process to realize how many of those messages are deep in my body because of my religious tradition. And as I've talked with a number of people, people of faith who are getting involved in the Occupy movement in one way or another, I hear them articulate this over and over again, that, that these, are, these values that are being articulated in this movement are very similar to the sorts of things that I was taught growing up. And not only that, this is wisdom that I learned that I also realized was true for me. So even my internal authority tells me that this is true. Now, in this conversation, in the bigger realm, every once in a while you'll hear someone drop the phrase, wealth redistribution. And I think, okay, that's one way to look at it, but it's kind of like you, you're, you're going to expect a knock on the door sometime, and there'll be someone, very officious kind of person with a, I don't know how they'd be dressed, well, excuse me, I'm from the Wealth Redistribution Bureau, and we've come to pick up a little bit of your wealth so we can spread it around to your neighbors. Which, you know, at a, a kind of a basic level doesn't seem quite fair. It doesn't seem quite fair that, that somebody's wealth might be taken away to be redistributed. And isn't that kind of the point? The way you say something has everything to do with the way you perceive it. Uh, George Lakoff would call this a frame. You know, you use a phrase, and, and it, it tells a lot of other things. Well, wealth redistribution, that doesn't seem quite fair. I got what I earned. Why should I have to, why should I have to give up any of it? But in my religious tradition, there's another 
sort of framing that I think is remarkably simple. It's called sharing. It's as simple as that. We share. And the reason we share is that so everyone can have enough. Oh, we, we, yes. We share so that everyone can have enough, because we're all connected. We are responsible for each other. Sharing, it's as simple as that. And why do I hold this value? Because I've gone to church, you know? My parents dragged me to church from the very beginning. And I still am involved in institutions that I see holding up these values. And just think of the power of that message in our time today. We are in a time where people are in trouble. The only way we're going to survive, in my opinion, is if we share. Now, I'm a strong believer in institutional support. Now, not, not everyone kind of feels that way. It's, it's said typically that progressive people want to point their resources to direct, um, direct aid. We want to be giving our money straight to the people who need it. We're less inclined support to support institutions that actually further that work in a bigger way. This church is an institution. And I see it as a multiplier. Because I can't do everything myself. I can't be involved in every issue. I can't lift up every issue. I can't, I can't do everything, but I rely on the people in my community to be helping me to hold the whole picture. Think of the power of this place and the way it has changed people's lives. Those of you who are sitting right there, me, standing here, it was an act of Providence? Accident? I don't know what got me here in 1977, but this church has radically changed my life. And this church, the fingers of this church extend throughout the community, through the actions of each one of you, through the work that we support in a variety of ways. Just by holding this strong center in this place, this church is a rock a place where people can come and go to find a community of faithful people who are holding up values as simple as sharing. And this church is also a beacon, shining its light out beyond its walls to say to other people, look, there is another way to do it. Even as we rest, some of us quite comfortably in the systems as they work now, we are also aware of injustice and inequality, and we carry those values with us. This church holds up those values. It supports each of us. To, to know that there is another way. Even when all the voices around us are saying something different, we gather together to be reminded that there is another way. We are sharing. We're sharing through these simple contributions of food for people who perhaps don't have enough. I, I went to the pack and save yesterday, and I, and I just had two relatively small bags of canned stuff, and it was like 40 bucks. What about people who don't have 40 bucks to get two small bags of stuff? And we're sharing in this table this mystical meal that feeds us in a way that we can hardly imagine. Just this simple little thing. And we do it time after time to be reminded, yes, there is another way. So I invite you just to imagine your place 
in this community. I invite you to imagine the way that the people sitting next to you are hold, holding you up. I invite you to imagine the way this place and what it believes is being, being furthered in the world, communicating this simple message. Yes, we are in this together. Yes, we are in this together. Yes, we are in this together. Amen.